Hi everyone, it's Dot, and we're experimenting in the kitchen with one of my husband's favorite ingredients. See if you can guess which one when I tell you what I'm making. Obviously, I have a big old ham here. We're making a orange maple bourbon glazed ham. Easter is just right around the corner, and this is a dish or a variation of a dish that I made last year for the family. So obviously the star of it is the ham. It's right here. Now the recipe I have below, the ham is not this big. I couldn't find a smaller one than this. So this one's pretty good, but that's okay because my husband is really excited to dig into it. So we have the ham. His favorite ingredient that he wanted me to use is right here. It's uh, a bourbon, which he loves, which is Woodford Reserve. So we're going to be using a touch of that in there. And the nice thing about it is the alcohol will burn off. We're using it just for the flavor. That's it. I'm also going to be using, I have a low carb sweetener I'm using. I have oranges as you see here. Now, you know, I don't usually cook with oranges. I don't use them because of how much sugar is in it. However, it's the zest I'm really interested in and of both of them and maybe a little bit of the juice. I'm also going to be using some molasses, unsulfured molasses, and there is a reason for it. And I'll get into that in just a moment. I'm also going to be using a uh, maple flavored syrup, which is made out of monk fruit, which is a nice low carb sweetener that you can use as well. And we'll talk a little bit of, uh, about this one. And then of course I'm using apple cider vinegar, my favorite vinegar to use. And then just in general, I'm going to be seasoning it with whole cloves, I have some ginger, again, a little bit different from what I normally make it with, and I'm going to be using stone ground mustard as well. So with that, before we get ready to make the glaze, this is all the glaze ingredients, I'm going to go ahead and get the ham in the oven because it takes a long time for this size ham to warm up. It's already cooked. However, I got to warm up 14 pounds of ham. So I'm going to go ahead, cover it in tin foil. I got the oven set, already preheated at 350 degrees. This ham is going to go in on the lowest rack possible, and we're just going to have fun as this guy's warming up. All right, it's going to be a little bit before I make my glaze, so I thought I'd talk about some of the ingredients that I'm using, which I don't normally use when I cook. The first one is blackstrap unsulfured molasses. Now, most of you, if you're not familiar with it, are thinking about molasses as it's just pure sugar. Why would you use that if you're low carb or doing keto? Well, this type of molasses is very different than other types of molasses. Number one, it's much lower in sugars than regular molasses. That's an important factor in this, so it has fewer carbs. The other thing is when you're talking about blackstrap on sulfured molasses, it is very similar in a way that pure maple syrup and raw honey is in that there are not a whole lot of processing happens with it and they retain their nu nutritional value essentially. So when you're looking at uh, this type of molasses, you're going to find it's iron in it. It's going to have potassium. It's going to have calcium and other vitamins and minerals. So it's actually a pretty healthy form and many paleo people use this type of uh, molasses as well as uh, low carbers and some keto people will use it as well. But you just have to be very careful with the quantities because it is still sugar, essentially. So you want to keep that in mind. I would say if you're really insulin resistant and have a high blood sugar level, this isn't something you would want to use yet. Now, as you break your insulin resistance and become more tolerant to insulin, your body becomes more tolerant to it, then this is something you could add to baking. The next ingredient I'm using that you don't normally see me use is a syrup. This one's a little bit different because it uses monk fruit. And this particular brand, if you're interested in getting it off of Amazon, I'll have a link uh, below, but it's Lacanto that um, I'm using. And it's maple flavored, so it actually tastes exactly like maple syrup. Uh, we did a taste test. It's the first time I'm actually using this particular brand uh, for syrup. And it does taste it's the closest thing I, I've ever tasted to pure maple syrup. So bravo to you guys for doing that. It's low in carbs, which is good and, lo and low in sugars. So it's actually very nice. And using this in the recipe, I'm using a half a cup, which is a pretty big sample, but I've got a big ham. That only is going to be about four carbs. And that ham goes go, is for 18 people. So that you're talking just trace amounts of carbs that I'm adding to the dish. So that's why this is actually a nice little thing to add. If you can't get this, you don't want to go to Amazon or you're looking for something. This isn't necessarily the cheapest thing, but 
it's rare I'm going to use a half a cup when I do use this. So there is something else you can use, which is you'll find this in grocery stores. It's in my pantry. I use it, which is Maple Grove Farms. It's a low calorie, sugar-free maple flavored syrup. And you can use this. Absolutely. Uh, go right ahead. It, it's not as, I guess you could say pure or clean in a way, because there are, it's more processed and there's chemicals because it's maple flavored type of syrup. I will say this, using this in this recipe would be about roughly two grams of carbs. Again, not a whole lot when you're using a big ham. The next thing I have in my fridge, I'm pulling this, this out just for a comparison. This is the real thing. This is real pure maple syrup. I've got family in Vermont, so I got my supply, suppliers up there. This is for a quarter cup, 53 grams of carbs, and that's pure sugar. Pretty much. Now there are there is a lot of nutritional value. There is nutrition in maple syrup. There are some minerals and vitamins you get out of it. However, this is something I wouldn't use for a dish like that because you're basically turning this dish into something where this ham by itself would be about 10 grams of carbs for a serving of ham. That's not something I really want to do. So this is does add great flavor. I do use it, but I use it sparingly and in very little amounts. That just gives you an idea of what you're looking at. So this is, you're talking about for half a cup, four carbs. Here you're talking about two carbs for half a cup. And this would be well over a hundred carbs for half a cup. So you can see the difference. The nice thing is this comes really close to tasting just like this guy. So that's awesome. So with that, I'm going to check on my ham and then soon we'll start making the glaze. My husband claimed that this was for medicinal purposes. <laughs> Thankfully, now we're going to go ahead and start making the glaze and he won't be able to get this from me for a while. So the first thing I want to do, what you want to do is go ahead and you, we're going to basically zest the oranges and you want to use a microplane basically. And all you're going to do is just, you don't want to get to the white part of the orange because that's where it's really, uh, it's really bitter in flavor. You really just want the top level orange. And I have a little plate here to catch the zest so you can see what it looks like. You can see a little bit of what it looks like again, just that. If you've got a grater, a lot of box graters have very, very uh, a side with really, really small grating. You can certainly use something like that if you want to. You don't necessarily have to have a microplane. I want about two, close to two tablespoons of the zest and that's about going to be close to two oranges. It may not be the full amount, but we'll see. I've zested both oranges. It's right here. It's about two tablespoons. The smell is absolutely driving me mad. I love the smell of oranges. So this is going to be wonderful for the ham. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can get away with just juicing one instead of two. So I'm going to go ahead, cut my orange open. And now here's the dilemma I have is I have my little juicer, but it really is for a lemon and a lime. It is not for an orange, as you can see. Oranges are much bigger. So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to squeeze. So this is going to hurt <laughs> my hand more than anything else. I'm also going to be on the lookout for any seeds, obviously. And I want to take out any type of piece like that. And then anything that just looks big and cushy. I went ahead, I've juiced one orange. You can see the remnants right there. I've got one more. I'm going to put that aside because I'm hoping I don't have to use it, but there is a possibility it might be used. I'm going to go ahead. I want to add my mustard sweetener, ginger, and I'm just going to mix this up right now before I get to the serious ingredients all in a bottle. Here's a little secret for you. Since I changed up my recipe, I have a little cheat sheet that I have to use because I had to change the, I not only changed up the recipe, but I also changed, I had to change up the quantities at the last minute because my ham is so dang big. So <laughs> I have my cheat sheet for that. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my ingredients. So I'm going to add in my vinegar, which is, I'm only adding in one and a half teaspoons of vinegar. I'm adding that in half a cup of my sweetener, my syrup. I'm sorry. I've already added in the sweetener. And it smells wonderful. It smells just like maple syrup. So you just want to stir it all up. Next thing we're going to add is our molasses. This will add some nice coloring to my glaze. Last but not least, 
something my husband is anxious for because he, he's really nervous I'm going to use a lot of this, <laughs> apparently. This is an eighth of a cup, which is two tablespoons, so I'm going to use three of these. <laughs> it'll make your ham taste better honey so it's okay all right i took my ham out of the oven and you can see the skin shrunk just slightly and what i'm going to do is i'm going to score the top of the ham and what i mean by scoring and you want to make sure you have a sharp knife you want to just cut through that fat layer and the reason why i'm scoring it is i want to make sure the glaze i add onto this actually penetrates past the skin you'll see here is I'm basically making these types of cuts here so you can see nice little squares what I'm just going to do is go ahead and add my cloves because it's going to cook for about another 40 minutes or so once the glaze is on and this is again you're just adding a little bit of flavor it's important to keep in mind you're not going to eat the cloves at all they're too hard you don't want to eat them whoops that fell in there you don't want to eat them at all but all you're doing is just they'll impart some flavor into the ham itself all right, so if, as you can see here, I scored down here and I'll, the other side too, but you can see where I put in the cloves at. I'm not gonna brush the glaze on. You certainly can do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start pouring it on and I just wanna make sure that it spreads across the ham. So I wanna get all parts. It's okay if it goes below because that's gonna get the coat the bottom of the ham as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna get my gloves back on and I'm gonna put it back in the oven for the last 40 minutes of cooking. And that should help crystallize and make this a little shiny. Maybe I, I might use a brush to take what's down here and, and coat it, but I don't really necessarily think it needs it. I like just pouring it on and just sort of letting it soak in. So put this in, it goes in at the bottom, and in about 40 minutes, it should be ready to take out of the oven. Okay, I just pulled the ham out of the oven. It's been rusting for about 15 minutes. It smells absolutely wonderful. I just wanna dive in. What I can smell right now is a nice orange. I can smell the maple, a little bit of hint of oak, which is the bourbon, cause I'm not gonna smell the alcohol, but it just smells delicious. It looks yummy with a nice coating of the um, glaze on it. It's all shiny and pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and cut, and how I'm gonna cut this because there's a nice fat cap on it that's about an inch all the way around. I'm gonna cut a thick slice off and then I'm gonna cut a thin piece off from there because the idea is you want all the different pieces to have the healthy, lovely tasting fat. Let me find a spot just so you can see what it looks like when, you, when I cut it. So you can see nice orange penetration. It's a nice little piece. So what I'm gonna do now is just remove all the cloves from this piece, then cut it and take a little bite. All right, I'm cutting up the ham, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste. I have on here actual ham, a bit of fat, and also some skin. Like I said, it just smells divine, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite. This is the best ham I've ever made, and it is the glaze. Oh my God. You get this burst of orange and then a nice subtle maple. It's a little, it has a little sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet, which is awesome. And a little bit of caramel, which comes from the bourbon. Man, it is absolutely delicious. I'm so happy about this. Now, there's a bit of carbs to this dish. It's not the nine or 10 carbs if I've used maple syrup, but there's about well, a little under five carbs. But if you round it up, it's five carbs per serving. And a serving size, I estimate it to be about three quarters to half a pound to three quarters of a pound of ham. So that's a lot. You know, I can't eat that much. My husband, I know, can. So pretty easily. I love it. It smells so good. It tastes wonderful. As good as it looks, it tastes even better. I'm so happy about this dish. So I'll have the recipe below. You can give it a try if you want this Easter, or, you know, if you, you can also, you know, change the ingredients around, be creative and do what you want. Uh, I hope you liked the video. I hope you try this dish out. Hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends as usual. And until next time, I'll see ya.